Welcome to sinister serials, where shadows whisper and every tale chills to the bone. Driller Thursday brings tales of survival, where every shadow could be your last. Dive into the depths of the mind with Labyrinth of the Unseen, this Thriller Thursday. Follow Elaine Mercer, a New York psychologist, as she deciphers a cryptic letter leading her to an abandoned warehouse and into a mysterious labyrinth. Inside, reality warps, as her patient's phobias and her own traumatic past manifest in terrifying ways. As Elaine confronts the labyrinth's creator, she must navigate a maze of psychological terror. Will she uncover the truth, or will the labyrinth claim her sanity? Chapter 9 The faint circle of light pulsed erratically, casting Elaine's shadow in a grotesque dance across the stone wall. She stepped forward cautiously, each footfall echoing in the cavernous space like a heartbeat in an empty chest. The ground beneath her feet felt uneven, as if the earth itself were shifting, trying to unbalance her. The walls seemed to subtly tilt, their angles defying the laws of physics. Even the light itself seemed to conspire against her contorting and stretching her form into an elongated, monstrous silhouette. Fear clawed at Elaine's composure, its icy talons shredding the last vestiges of her professional detachment. Was the labyrinth actually warping around her, or was her mind finally betraying her? The struggle to separate external manipulation from her own internal breakdown consumed her thoughts, a battle raging within the confines of her skull. Sounds distorted, their origins and distances impossible to gauge. The very air felt thick and oppressive, as if the chamber were slowly constricting, threatening to crush her. Elaine's goal shifted from merely seeking answers to desperately grasping for any semblance of grounding in reality itself. The environment had become an active antagonist, a malevolent force that seemed to delight in forcing her to re-examine her perception of what was real and what was illusion. She fought against the rising tide of panic, trying to anchor herself in the tangible, the quantifiable, but the more she tried to rely on her senses, the more they seemed to deceive her. An echoing voice pierced through the distortion, its source impossible to locate. Do you doubt your own eyes, psychologist? The words were sharp, cutting through the haze like a scalpel through flesh. Oh, do you doubt what they see? The accusation struck Elaine like a physical blow, knocking the breath from her lungs. It wasn't a riddle posed by some cryptic guardian, but a direct assault on her sanity, her very grasp on reality. The implication was clear. She wasn't just lost in some physical maze. Her entire perception of reality was unraveling, and she might be the unwitting architect of her own confusion. Her professional expertise, normally a source of strength and clarity, had been turned against her, transformed into a weapon that now threatened to destroy her from within. Panic flared within Elaine, a primal, all-consuming terror that threatened to overwhelm her entirely. But beneath that fear, a flicker of icy determination still burned. She planted her feet wide, pressing a trembling hand against the wall in a desperate attempt to physically ground herself. Reason became her lifeline, the only thread that could potentially lead her back from the brink of madness. With a Herculean effort, Elaine forced herself to recite her patient intake checklist, name, place, date, a simple ritual that had always served to center her before. She focused on cataloging the concrete, the indisputable facts that she could cling to like a drowning woman to a piece of driftwood. Closing her eyes, she took a slow, controlled breath, listening to the rhythm of her own pulse, trying to find some semblance of stability amidst the chaos that threatened to engulf her. Her actions managed to slow the spiraling panic, but only just. The room continued to warp and twist around her, seeming to mock her feeble efforts at maintaining control. The disembodied voice, whether it belonged to some oracle-like figure or was merely a projection of her own unraveling psyche, had made its point all too clear. The labyrinth wasn't just about physical riddles and traps. It was a psychological torture chamber designed to systematically break down her perception, to strip away the very foundations of her identity and leave her helpless. Elaine's greatest obstacle, she realized with a sinking dread, might not be some external guardian or mastermind, 
but her own mind's susceptibility to the labyrinth's insidious manipulations. It was a chilling revelation, one that threatened to undermine what little remained of her resolve. If she couldn't trust her own senses, her own judgment, then what hope did she have of ever escaping this nightmare? A flicker of vulnerability danced across Elaine's features, a momentary crack in the mask of determined stoicism she had been clinging to. The magnitude of this new threat was staggering, far beyond anything she had anticipated. Logic, the bedrock upon which she had built her entire identity, was failing her. Her last defense, she realized, was her own will to believe in an objective reality, to cling to some semblance of truth amidst the lies and illusions that sought to drown her, the line between what the disembodied voice controlled and what the labyrinth itself could do blurred, introducing a terrifying uncertainty. Was the voice the true architect of this madness, or was it merely another pawn in the labyrinth's twisted game? The implications were staggering, hinting at a malevolence and power far beyond what Elaine had initially imagined. The rasp of the disembodied voice broke through the warped silence once more. The walls do not shift, child. It is you who shifts. As if on cue, the light flickered and dimmed, the chamber suddenly seeming to expand to vast cavernous proportions. Elaine felt herself being plunged into an even deeper uncertainty, the ground beneath her feet turning to quicksand. Fear gave way to a grim unyielding determination. Elaine realized with a sudden, piercing clarity that her survival hinged on her ability to decipher what was real and what the labyrinth wanted her to believe was real. It was no longer just a physical challenge, but a battleground within her own mind. The voice's enigmatic words hinted at the true power of perception, suggesting that Elaine might be both the prisoner and the unwitting architect of her own torment. As Elaine studied the shifting walls, she noticed a strange recurring symbol etched into the stone, its form distorted and warped by the undulating light. It was a small detail, but one that nagged at the edges of her consciousness, hinting at some deeper meaning that remained just out of reach. Even more unsettling was the way the shadows seemed to elongate and distort, taking on an almost organic quality. They stretched and twisted in ways that defied physics, hinting at the presence of something decidedly non-human lurking just beyond the veil of perception. The unsettling nature of the space added weight to even the sparse, enigmatic dialogue that echoed through the chamber. Each word seemed laden with hidden meaning, a mocking reflection of Elaine's own doubts and fears. It was as if the labyrinth itself was speaking through the disembodied voice, taunting her with her own vulnerabilities, daring her to question the very nature of her reality. Gathering her inner strength and determination that she hadn't realized she had, Elaine fortified herself with newfound resolve. She knew that the path ahead would test the very limits of her sanity, pushing her to the brink of madness and beyond. But she also knew that she had no choice but to press on, to find a way to anchor herself in some semblance of truth, or risk losing herself entirely to the labyrinth's twisted designs. She took a step forward, then another, her footsteps echoing with a newfound purpose. The chamber seemed to shift and warp around her, but Elaine forced herself to focus on the solid ground beneath her feet, on the tangible sensations that could serve as her anchors in this sea of madness. She would not let the labyrinth break her, would not let it reduce her to a gibbering wreck lost in a maze of her own fears. With each step, Elaine felt a small flicker of hope rekindling in her chest. It was a fragile thing, a candle flame in a howling void, but it was enough, enough to keep her moving forward, enough to keep her clinging to the belief that somewhere, amidst the lies and illusions, there was a truth waiting to be uncovered, and she would find it, no matter the cost. For in this labyrinth of madness, the truth was the only thing that could set her free. The air grew thick and heavy as Elaine stumbled into the next chamber, her lungs straining against the oppressive atmosphere. A sickly, yellow light bathed the space, casting long shadows that seemed to writhe and dance of their own accord. Dust motes swirled lazily in the air, catching the light like tiny, tarnished stars. The chamber was dominated by a vast, ancient mirror, its surface rippling and distorting like water disturbed by a thrown stone. The mirror leaned at an unnatural angle, as if reality itself had been tilted off its axis. 
Its tarnished frame was intricately carved with symbols that seemed to shift and change when viewed from the corner of the eye. Elaine stared at the mirror, a wave of revulsion warring with a desperate curiosity. She knew on some instinctual level that this was yet another trap laid by the labyrinth, another psychological snare designed to shatter her already fragile grip on reality. But exhaustion and desperation eroded her caution, the need for something solid, something familiar, overwhelming her better judgment. She took a step towards the mirror, then another, drawn by a force that seemed to emanate from its very core. The sickly light cast harsh shadows across her face, emphasizing the dark circles under her eyes, the gauntness of her cheeks. The smell of old metal stung her nostrils, a cloying scent that seemed to coat the back of her throat. As she approached, an unidentifiable, mournful humming began to emanate from the mirror itself, a sound that seemed to vibrate in her very bones. It was a sound of ancient sorrow, of secrets long buried and forgotten. Elaine felt her heart begin to race, her palms slick with sweat. Suddenly her reflection rippled and distorted, the image twisting and warping like a funhouse mirror. But instead of her own face, a woman with sunken eyes and a twisted grin staggered into view. The figure looked disturbingly familiar, yet utterly wrong, as if someone had taken a portrait of Elaine and subtly, insidiously altered it. The woman's hair was the same rich, dark color as Elaine's, but it hung in lank, greasy strands around her gaunt face. Her eyes were a shocking, icy blue, but they were deeply set in bruised sockets, the whites shot through with blood. Her teeth, visible through her stretched, manic grin, were yellowed and cracked, some missing altogether. Elaine recoiled in shock, a gasp escaping her lips. But even as she tried to look away, she found her gaze locked onto the grotesque reflection, the woman's distorted smile mirroring her own growing horror. A deep, irrational jolt of recognition shot through her, something buried within her consciousness flickering towards the surface like a fish glimpsed in murky water. Driven by a mix of dread and desperation, Elaine cautiously stepped closer to the mirror, her heart pounding in her chest. She tentatively extended a trembling hand towards the mirror's surface, her fingertips hovering a hair's breadth from the cool glass. Her breath came in short, sharp gasps, the sound unnaturally loud in the oppressive silence of the chamber. As her fingertips finally met the mirror's surface, a jolt of icy energy shot through her arm, a searing cold that seemed to reach directly into her heart. In the same instant, the woman's reflection opened her mouth in a silent scream, her features contorting in agony. And then, layered behind the scream, Elaine heard another sound, a soft, childlike sobbing that tugged at the edges of her memory, a sound she felt she should recognize but couldn't quite place. The boundaries of reality seemed to blur and warp around her, the labyrinth's malevolent intent becoming increasingly unclear. Was this some sort of dark magic? A supernatural attack designed to shatter her psyche? Or was it a psychological manifestation, a projection of her own deepest fears and traumas? Or most disturbingly of all, could it be a genuine temporal fragment, a window into a past she had long suppressed? Elaine's mind raced as she grappled with the implications of the vision before her. If the labyrinth was capable of reaching into her memories, of twisting and distorting them, then could she trust anything she thought she knew about herself? The idea that her past might be far darker, far more traumatic than she had ever allowed herself to believe, was a terrifying one. She had always prided herself on her mental fortitude, on her ability to confront and overcome the demons of her own psyche. But now, faced with the possibility that those demons might be far more real, far more deeply rooted than she had ever imagined, she felt a creeping sense of doubt and despair. And yet, even as the horror of the situation threatened to overwhelm her, Elaine felt a flicker of something else, a grim determination, a resolve to see this through no matter the cost. If the labyrinth was offering her a key to unlocking the secrets of her past, then she had to take it, even if the truth might ultimately destroy her. She forced herself to step back from the mirror, her chest heaving with the effort of controlling her breathing. The sobbing faded, the woman's reflection swirling and distorting once again, until it resolved back into Elaine's own image, twisted and warped by the mirror's uneven surface. But as she stared at her reflection, something else caught her eye. 
a barely discernible symbol that flickered near the mirror's edge for the briefest of moments before vanishing altogether. It was the same symbol she had seen etched into the walls of the previous chamber, a recurring clue that seemed to taunt her with its elusiveness. Elaine's mind raced with the implications of the symbol's appearance. Was it a message from the labyrinth's creator, a breadcrumb trail leading her deeper into the maze's twisted heart? Or was it simply another layer of the labyrinth's psychological torment, a red herring designed to lead her astray? Regardless, Elaine knew that she had no choice but to press on, to follow the clues wherever they might lead. The labyrinth had made it clear that it would not release her until she had confronted the darkest corners of her own psyche, until she had unraveled the tangled knots of her own past. She took a deep breath, steadying herself against the surge of emotions that threatened to overwhelm her. Fear, doubt, despair, they all swirled within her like a maelstrom, threatening to pull her under. But beneath it all, a core of steel remained, a determination to see this through to the bitter end. Elaine turned away from the mirror, her footsteps echoing hollowly in the empty chamber as she made her way towards the exit. She knew that the road ahead would only grow darker, that the labyrinth's trials would only become more twisted and sadistic. But she also knew that she had no choice but to confront them head on, to stare into the abyss and dare it to blink first. As she stepped through the doorway and into the next chamber, Elaine felt a sense of grim anticipation settle over her. Whatever secrets the labyrinth held, whatever horrors it had in store, she would face them all. And in the end, she would emerge victorious, or she would die trying. The mirror chamber faded into the darkness behind her, its secrets and horrors receding into the shadows. But Elaine knew that they would never truly leave her, that they would haunt her dreams and waking moments alike. The labyrinth had a way of burrowing into the mind of planting seeds of doubt and fear that could never be fully uprooted. But even as the darkness closed in around her, Elaine held onto the flicker of hope that burned within her chest. It was a fragile thing, a candle flame guttering in the face of an endless void. But it was hers, and she would cling to it with every ounce of strength she possessed. For in the end, it was all she had left. The hope that somewhere, amidst the madness and the horror, there was a truth waiting to be uncovered. And she would find it, no matter the cost. Elaine stepped into the next chamber, her heart still racing from the encounter with the mirror. The air here was different, cooler and damper, with a faint breeze that seemed to whisper past her ears. The walls were lined with strange, tubular protrusions, each one emitting a faint, eerie glow. As she moved further into the room, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. At first, they were indistinct, a jumble of voices that seemed to be coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. But as Elaine strained to listen, certain words and phrases began to emerge from the cacophony. Failure. Unworthy. You can't save them. Elaine felt a chill run down her spine as she realized that the voices were speaking directly to her, echoing her own deepest fears and doubts. She tried to block them out, to focus on the task at hand, but the whispers only grew louder, more persistent. You couldn't save her. You'll never escape. You belong here with us. Elaine pressed her hands over her ears, trying to shut out the insidious voices. But they seemed to bypass her physical senses entirely, burrowing directly into her mind like parasitic worms. She could feel them writhing in her brain, feeding on her fears and insecurities, growing stronger with each passing moment. She stumbled forward, her vision blurring with tears of frustration and despair. The voices were relentless, hammering at her defenses with a cruel, calculating precision. They seemed to know exactly where to strike, which wounds to reopen, which scars to prod and worry it until they bled anew. You're just like them. Broken, worthless. You'll never be whole. Elaine felt herself beginning to crumble under the onslaught, her grip on reality slipping away like sand through her fingers. She could feel the darkness closing in around her, the weight of the labyrinth's malevolence pressing down on her like a physical force. But even as she teetered on the brink of despair, something deep within her refused to surrender. 
a tiny, stubborn spark of defiance that had kept her going through all the trials and torments of the labyrinth, that had refused to be extinguished no matter how dark the path had grown. With a surge of determination, Elaine forced herself to straighten up, to square her shoulders and face the whispering walls head on. She drew in a deep, shuddering breath, and then another, focusing on the rhythm of her own heartbeat, the solidity of the ground beneath her feet. No, she said, her voice trembling but clear. You're wrong, I am not broken, I am not worthless, and I will not let you defeat me. The voices faltered for a moment, as if taken aback by her sudden show of defiance. But then they redoubled their efforts, their whispers turning to shrieks and howls of rage. You will never leave this place. You are ours, now and forever. Submit or be destroyed. Elaine gritted her teeth, her hands clenching into fists at her sides. She could feel the voices battering at her mind, trying to tear down her last defenses. But she refused to let them in, refused to give them the satisfaction of seeing her break. With a final, desperate effort, she pushed forward, staggering towards the far end of the chamber. The voices rose to a deafening crescendo, their words blurring together into a single, piercing scream of fury and frustration. But Elaine did not falter. She kept moving, one step at a time, her gaze fixed on the doorway ahead. And as she neared the threshold, the scream began to fade, the voices receding into the distance like a retreating tide. She stumbled through the doorway, her breath coming in ragged gasps, her heart pounding in her chest. Behind her, the whispering gallery fell silent, its malevolent energies dissipating like mist in the morning sun. Elaine leaned against the wall, her legs trembling with exhaustion and spent adrenaline. She knew that she had just faced one of the labyrinth's most insidious traps, a gauntlet designed to break her will and shatter her sanity. And yet, somehow, she had emerged victorious. But even as she savored the small triumph, Elaine knew that it was only a temporary reprieve. The labyrinth was far from finished with her and the horrors that lay ahead would only grow more twisted and sadistic with each passing moment. Still, she clung to the knowledge that she had faced the darkness and emerged unbroken. She had stared into the abyss, and the abyss had blinked first. And that, more than anything, gave her the strength to keep going, to press on towards the truth that lay at the heart of the labyrinth. With a final, steadying breath, Elaine pushed herself away from the wall and turned to face the path ahead. The shadows seemed to deepen and lengthen before her, the labyrinth's malevolent presence palpable in the air. Chapter 10 The sickly sweet scent clung to Elaine's skin like a suffocating shroud, dragging her back into a labyrinth of memory. Sterile hospital corridors, the rhythmic beep of unseen monitors. Each breath brought a fresh wave of panic the air thick with the rancid smell of old bandages and the coppery tang of blood. Elaine recoiled, her heart pounding against her ribs as she took in her surroundings. The room was a grotesque mockery of an operating theater, the equipment rusted and decaying, the walls stained with the remnants of past horrors. Harsh lights flickered overhead, their erratic pulse mirroring the frantic racing of her own thoughts. Escape, she needed to escape. But even as the primal urge surged through her veins, another part of her mind rebelled. Why this memory, why now, of all the traumas buried deep within her psyche, what twisted purpose did the labyrinth have in unearthing this particular one? Elaine forced herself to breathe, to push past the rising tide of panic. She was a psychologist, damn it, she'd fought too hard, come too far, to lose control now. But even as she clung to that lifeline of professional detachment, doubt gnawed at the edges of her resolve. Was this a regression, a loss of the hard-won control she'd spent years building? Or was the labyrinth exploiting her past, twisting it into a new form of torture? The echoing clang of metal against stone shattered her reverie. Elaine spun, her gaze drawn to a shattered mirror hanging askew on the far wall. In the flickering light, her reflection stared back at her, pale, haggard, eyes wide with a fear that bordered on madness. But beneath the terror, a flicker of unsettling clarity burned. The memory surged forward, 
no longer fragmented but brutally lucid. A hospital room, the air heavy with the cloying scent of sickness and despair. A frantic argument, the words muffled through a haze of medication. And a feeling of desperate powerlessness, of being trapped in a body that had betrayed her. Elaine stumbled back, her hand finding the cold metal of the surgical table. The memory was linked to her work, to a case that had haunted her for years. A patient, a young woman, her mind fractured by trauma and abuse. Elaine had tried to help her, to guide her through the labyrinth of her own shattered psyche. But in the end, she'd failed. The woman had taken her own life, leaving Elaine with a burden of guilt and shame that she'd never quite been able to shake. Shame washed over her in a cold wave, mirroring the chill of the room. She tried to look away from the mirror, to banish the memory back to the darkest recesses of her mind. But the labyrinth wouldn't let her. The image flickered, the woman's face morphing into her own. The accusation in her eyes a damning reflection of Elaine's own self-loathing. Tears stung her eyes, but Elaine blinked them away. No, she wouldn't let the labyrinth break her. Not like this. Gritting her teeth, she forced herself to examine the memory, to analyze it with the clinical detachment of a psychologist. There had to be a weakness, a flaw in the illusion that she could exploit. But as she focused, the memory began to overlay the room, blurring the lines between past and present. The rusted surgical tray morphed into an overflowing medicine cabinet, the bottles rattling with each flicker of the lights. The weak pulse of a bedside monitor echoed the discordant note that had haunted her since she'd first stepped into this nightmare. The note grew louder, a dissonant chord that sent icy tendrils of dread down Elaine's spine. It mirrored the racing of her own pulse, the pounding of blood in her ears. And then the voices began. A chorus of accusation, of condemnation, rising from the depths of her own tortured mind. You failed her. You could have saved her. It's your fault. Elaine clapped her hands over her ears, but the voices only grew louder. They echoed off the crumbling walls, the words twisting and distorting until they lost all meaning. This was more than a memory, more than a simple traumatic flashback. The labyrinth was weaponizing her past turning her own guilt and self-doubt against her in a brutal assault on her psyche. The voices reached a crescendo, a cacophony of blame and recrimination that threatened to shatter her entirely. Elaine sank to her knees, her fingers digging into her scalp as if she could physically claw the voices from her mind. Were they even real, or were they simply the manifestation of the judgments she'd long harbored against herself? amplified and given malevolent form by the labyrinth's insidious influence? A wave of nausea crashed over her, and Elaine retched, the sour taste of bile flooding her mouth. The memory had broken her, shattered the fragile walls she'd built around her trauma. But even as despair threatened to engulf her, a spark of defiance ignited in her chest. Rage, hot and pure, surged through her veins. Rage at the labyrinth, at its creator at the twisted mind that had orchestrated this nightmare. But more than that, rage at herself, at her own weakness, her own failure to confront the demons of her past. Elaine pushed herself to her feet, her legs trembling beneath her. The voices were fading now, receding back into the shadows. But as they did, a single word repeated, growing louder with each iteration. Not an accusation, but a plea a desperate cry for help that echoed through the chambers of her heart. Help me! The room shifted, the walls crumbling away to reveal a cramped, unfamiliar corridor. Fear gave way to a cold, clinical detachment as understanding dawned. The labyrinth had forced her to confront one memory, one trauma. But it wasn't done with her yet. The plea, the crumbling room, they were linked, a clue to the labyrinth's true purpose. A past patient, a case she'd buried deep within the recesses of her mind. A memory she'd repressed, perhaps, because the truth was too painful to bear. Elaine's gaze fell to the floor, where a single scalpel lay amidst the debris. The blade gleamed in the flickering light, a tangible reminder of the horrors she'd endured. But as she reached for it, her eyes caught on a pattern etched into the rusted metal. A geometric design, intricate and hauntingly familiar. 
the symbol of the labyrinth's creator, growing bolder with each step she took deeper into this nightmare. Elaine's fingers closed around the scalpel's handle, the weight of it strangely comforting in her palm. She straightened, her jaw set with grim determination. The labyrinth wanted her to remember, to confront the darkest corners of her psyche, and as much as the prospect terrified her, a part of her yearned for the truth, no matter how painful it might be. She stepped forward, into the waiting jaws of the corridor. The shadows seemed to writhe and twist around her, their whispers a mocking echo of her own racing thoughts. But Elaine ignored them, her focus narrowed to a single, burning point of clarity. She would unravel the labyrinth's secrets, she would confront the demons of her past, and she would emerge from this nightmare, broken, perhaps, but unbroken. A survivor, forged in the crucible of her own shattered mind. The corridor stretched out before her, a gaping maw ready to swallow her whole. But Elaine didn't hesitate, with a final, steadying breath, she plunged forward, into the waiting darkness. The scalpel glinted in her hand, a promise and a threat. The discordant note pulsated in Elaine's skull, a relentless drumbeat that threatened to shatter her fragile grasp on reality. She stumbled into the cramped corridor, each uneven tile sending a wave of disorienting deja vu crashing over her. This place, it was oddly, sickeningly familiar. Flickering fluorescent lights bathed the cracked walls in a sickly green hue, casting grotesque shadows that seemed to writhe with a life of their own. Broken equipment littered the floor, the twisted metal and shattered glass a macabre reminder of the ruin that surrounded her. And through it all, a distant rhythmic beeping echoed, unnaturally loud in the oppressive silence. Elaine's heart hammered against her ribs, a frantic counterpoint to the beeping that seemed to mirror the discordant note. She needed to identify the memory that was tormenting her, to put a name to the dread that coiled in her gut. But each echo, each flicker of light, only fueled the mounting panic that threatened to consume her. Disgust ward with a desperate need for answers. There was something about this setting, something that spoke to a personal turmoil buried deep within her subconscious. A truth that she'd buried, perhaps, because the alternative was too painful to bear. She forced herself to breathe, to focus on the tangible details around her. The rancid smell of disinfectant, the way the flickering light cast the debris in a hellish green glow. The beeping, a strangled gasp escaped her lips. The beeping wasn't distant anymore. It was inside her head, a frantic pulse that mirrored the racing of her own heart. And with each beat, the memories came, fragmented and disjointed. Elaine rounded a corner and recoiled, her hand flying to her mouth. Before her was an empty patient room, the door ajar, and there, taped to the window, was a child's drawing. A stick figure holding a balloon, bathed in the flickering green light. The memories assaulted her then, a tidal wave of images and emotions that threatened to sweep her away. A worried mother's face, etched with lines of grief and desperation. The hushed whispers of doctors, their voices a cacophony of clinical jargon that meant nothing and everything. An empty bed, the sheets still rumpled from the weight of a small body. Elaine stumbled back, her shoulders hitting the wall behind her. The weight of professional responsibility crushed her, a suffocating reminder of the case that had haunted her for years. A child custody battle, her testimony inadvertently influencing the decision to place the child in a dangerous situation. But there was something else, something that lurked at the edges of her memory. A detail obscured, a missing piece that filled her with a gut-wrenching dread. The memory wasn't just painful, it was incomplete. A strangled cry tore from her throat, and she stumbled towards the room, nausea rising in her gorge. She needed to grasp at something, anything concrete to battle the fragmented echoes that assaulted her. Logic was failing her. She could only confront this ghost, whatever the cost. She found a cracked picture frame on the window sill the glass shattered and jagged. Elaine picked it up with trembling hands, examining the fractures as if they held the key to the mystery that tormented her. The child's face stared back at her, a silent accusation that pierced her to her core. As she focused on the room, the discordant note morphed, 
twisting into the sound of a child sobbing. It was interspersed with the accusatory words of a judge, a damning condemnation of her failures. And beneath it all, Elaine's own voice echoed, reciting clinical analyses that rang hollow in the face of such raw, unbridled anguish. The child's drawing seemed to shift, the lines blurring and warping before her eyes. The balloon floated away, a mocking symbol of lost innocence, and the figure, it crumbled, dissolving into a shapeless mass that mirrored the collapse of Elaine's own composure. This wasn't just about a past failure, she realized with a sickening lurch of her stomach. The labyrinth was revealing the true depth of her buried guilt, the ways in which her actions had impacted others. She wasn't just a witness to suffering, she was complicit in it. Did the child run away? Suffer a worse fate? Elaine's inability to access the full memory made her doubt her own sanity, her own grasp on reality. She was trapped in a maze of her own making, a labyrinth of guilt and self-recrimination that offered no escape. She sank to the floor beneath the accusatory gaze of the child's drawing, the glass from the picture frame biting into her palms. The guilt was unbearable, a weight that threatened to crush her entirely. And in that moment, she knew the truth. She wasn't just trapped in the labyrinth. She deserved to be here. But even as despair threatened to engulf her, a flicker of defiance sparked to life in her chest. She pressed a shard of glass to her palm, the pain a bright point of clarity amidst the chaos. The sobbing faded, replaced by a single word, distorted and strange. Liar! Self-condemnation battled with a grim resolve. She would accept the guilt, bear the weight of her failures. But she wouldn't surrender to it. That word, spoken in a voice she couldn't quite place, held a clue. A hint at who, or what, awaited her in the depths of this nightmare. She rose to her feet, the glass still clutched in her hand. The labyrinth knew something, a darker truth about her past that she hadn't yet uncovered. Perhaps her failure hadn't been a failure at all but something intentionally engineered. A piece of a greater scheme in which she was not just a pawn, but an unwitting participant. The thought sent a chill down her spine, but it also strengthened her resolve. She would play this game, follow the twisted path the labyrinth laid out for her. And she would uncover the truth, no matter how painful it might be. With a final glance at the child's drawing, Elaine turned and strode out of the room. The corridor stretched out before her, a gaping maw that promised only darkness and despair. But she wouldn't falter, not now, not when the answers she sought were finally within reach. The glass bit into her palm, a physical reminder of the pain that lurked within her own mind. But it was also a talisman, a symbol of the defiance that now burned in her heart. She was ready for the next challenge, the next ghostly specter dredged up from the depths of her own troubled past. And this time, she wouldn't be broken by it. The rhythmic beeping from the unseen monitor grew louder, each pulse a hammer blow against Elaine's skull. The child's accusing word, Liar! echoed faintly, a ghostly whisper that fueled her desperation. She staggered forward, the corridor stretching and warping around her like a nightmare made manifest. The fluorescent lights flickered overhead their sickly glow casting elongated shadows that writhed along the cracked walls. They stretched and contorted, transforming the once familiar hallway into a grotesque parody of itself. Equipment malfunctioned, emitting discordant beeps and moans that echoed the labyrinth's omnipresent musical torment. Panic clawed at Elaine's throat, threatening to consume her entirely. She fought against it, desperate for any semblance of control amidst the disorienting chaos. She needed an anchor, a stable point in the maelstrom of her own fractured memories. Something, anything, that remained unsullied by the labyrinth's corruption. But everywhere she looked, the environment shifted and changed, attacking her clinical detachment and exposing the raw nerve of her guilt and fear. Gurneys stretched unnaturally, their metal frames elongating and twisting into impossible shapes. Exam room doors shrank and expanded, their proportions warping until they resembled gaping, toothless maws. And the child's drawing. It was everywhere now, plastered across the walls like a mocking tapestry. 
The stick figure with the balloon shimmered and melted, its lines blurring and running like wet ink. The balloon itself pulsed and throbbed, a grotesque heart pumping out waves of sickening, green light. Elaine's breath came in short, panicked gasps. She forced herself to focus, to dissect her surroundings with the cold, analytical precision that had served her so well in the past. She clung to that facade of professional detachment, imposing order on the chaos even as it threatened to swallow her whole. A sudden, deafening crash shattered her concentration. At the end of the hallway, an operating theater door burst open, a blinding light spilling out from within. And there, silhouetted against the glare, was a figure, a distorted, monstrous thing that lurched and shambled, its movements jerky and unnatural. But even as revulsion slammed into her, Elaine's eyes caught on a familiar detail, a clipboard, clutched in the figure's misshapen hand. It was the doctor from the memory, she realized with a sickening lurch of her stomach. But he was horribly warped, his features dissolving and reforming into something inhuman. His eyes were sunken pits, his mouth a gaping, toothless maw. And yet, there was a coldness to his expression, a clinical detachment that was all too familiar. Elaine's guilt manifested before her in monstrous form, a physical embodiment of the self-condemnation that had haunted her for so long. The doctor's face flickered and shifted, morphing into the tear-streaked visage of the child's mother. Her accusing gaze bore into Elaine a silent condemnation that pierced her to her core. But the doctor didn't advance. He remained at the threshold, a sentinel guarding the entrance to a memory that Elaine couldn't fully confront. A part of her wanted to flee, to turn and run from the nightmare that unfolded before her. But another part, the part that had driven her to become a psychologist in the first place, refused to yield. She forced her gaze onto the clipboard the doctor held, focusing on that one unchanging detail amidst the chaos. It was the key, she realized, the one thing that might lead to clarity within the fractured labyrinth of her own mind. With a deep, shuddering breath, Elaine took a step forward. And another, she moved towards the light, towards the monstrous figure that loomed before her. It was an act of defiance, a refusal to be cowed by the horrors the labyrinth had unleashed upon her. She leaned into her professional instincts, observing the distortion with a cool, clinical eye. She analyzed the impossible anatomy, the way the doctor's limbs bent and twisted at unnatural angles. It was a medical oddity, a challenge to be unraveled and understood. And in that moment, the figure flickered. For a heartbeat, the monstrous form was replaced by the concerned face of the doctor from her memory. His features were clear and sharp, untouched by the labyrinth's corruption. But then the clipboard began to bleed, crimson rivulets staining his hands and dripping onto the floor below. The hallway twisted and elongated, stretching out before Elaine like a funhouse mirror. Exam rooms sprouted from the walls like grotesque tumors, their doors oozing the same sickly, green light that pulsed from the child's drawing. Each one was a potential gateway into another fractured memory another piece of the puzzle that made up Elaine's shattered psyche. The stakes had never been higher. Elaine's past was now a literal labyrinth within the labyrinth, a twisting, turning maze of distorted memories and half-forgotten traumas. She had to choose which door to open, which nightmare to confront. And each choice carried with it the risk of further suffering, of sinking even deeper into the abyss of her own guilt and self-loathing. But even as despair threatened to engulf her, a flicker of uncertainty sparked to life in Elaine's mind. Was the doctor merely another manifestation of the labyrinth, another twisted reflection of her own inner turmoil? Or was he something more, a subconscious cry for help from the forgotten child she had failed so long ago? Elaine clenched her fist, feeling the sharp bite of the glass shard against her palm. The pain grounded her tethering her to reality even as the world around her dissolved into madness. There was no going back now, no retreat from the horrors that lay ahead. She had to confront the darkest possibility, the one that had haunted her for so long, that the child's suffering wasn't over, that her failure had condemned an innocent soul to an endless nightmare. She took another step forward, 
her jaw set with grim determination. And then she saw it. A trail of light, pooling from under one of the pulsating exam room doors. It was different from the sickly green glow that suffused the rest of the hallway, warmer and more inviting. And then, from behind the door, came a whisper, the echoing voice of the child, the one she had failed so long ago. But this time, there was no accusation in that voice, no blame or condemnation. Only urgency, a desperate plea for help. Help me. The words hung in the air, a lifeline thrown into the churning waters of Elaine's guilt and despair. She lunged for the door, her heart hammering in her chest. Fear had given way to a grim sense of purpose, a determination to see this through to the end, no matter the cost. She was no longer merely trapped, she realized. The labyrinth had given her a twisted path, a nightmarish road map leading deeper into the heart of her own shattered psyche. She had to follow it, to unravel the mysteries that lay ahead. Only then could she hope to find a way out, to absolve herself of the guilt that had haunted her for so long. Elaine's hand closed around the doorknob, the metal cool and slick beneath her fingers. She turned it slowly, feeling the mechanism click and release. And then, with a deep, steadying breath, she pushed the door open and stepped inside. The room beyond was a chamber of horrors, a twisted reflection of the operating theater from her memories. The walls pulsed and throbbed like living flesh, the floor slick with a viscous, dark fluid that clung to her shoes. And in the center of it all, lying on a rusted gurney, was the child. But it wasn't the child as Elaine remembered them, small and fragile and innocent. This was a twisted, distorted thing, its limbs bent at impossible angles, its face a mask of agony and despair. The child's mouth gaped open in a silent scream, a endless cry of pain and suffering. Elaine's stomach heaved, bile rising in her throat. She wanted to turn away, to flee from the horrific sight before her. But she forced herself to look, to take in every gruesome detail. This was her failure made manifest, the consequences of her actions given horrific form. She stepped closer to the gurney, her heart pounding in her ears. The child's eyes snapped open, fixing her with a gaze that seemed to pierce her very soul. And in that moment, Elaine saw something that made her blood run cold. The child's features were dissolving, melting and reforming like wax under a flame. And beneath that shifting, mutable surface, she caught a glimpse of something else entirely. Something malevolent, a presence that had haunted her every step through the labyrinth. The creator, Elaine recoiled, her mind reeling with the implications. The labyrinth wasn't just a manifestation of her own guilt and trauma, she realized. It was a construct, a carefully crafted nightmare designed to break her down and unmake her entirely. And at its heart was the creator, the puppet master pulling the strings. The one who had taken her deepest, darkest fears and given them twisted, monstrous form. Elaine's hand tightened around the glass shard, the pain a distant echo compared to the horror that gripped her heart. She had to confront this, to face the truth of what the labyrinth really was. And what it meant for her, for the child, for everything she had ever believed in. She forced herself to look back at the child, to meet that piercing, accusing gaze. And in that moment, she saw something else entirely, a flicker of recognition, a spark of humanity amidst the horror and despair. The child was still in there, still trapped within the nightmare the labyrinth had created and Elaine was the only one who could save them, the only one who could put an end to their suffering. She reached out a trembling hand, her fingers hovering just above the child's warped and twisted form. And then, with a final, desperate surge of courage, she made contact. The world exploded around her, a kaleidoscope of color and sound and sensation. Elaine felt herself falling, tumbling through an endless void of memories and emotions. She saw the child as they had been, small and frightened and alone. She saw the doctor, his face a mask of cold indifference. And she saw herself, a figure of guilt and self-loathing, forever haunted by the choices she had made. But amidst the chaos and the horror, Elaine also saw something else. A glimmer of hope, 
a faint and flickering light in the darkness. And she knew, with a sudden, fierce certainty, that she had to follow it. She had to save the child, to put an end to their suffering once and for all. And in doing so, perhaps she could finally save herself as well. Elaine's eyes snapped open, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She was back in the operating theater, the child's twisted form still lying before her on the gurney. But something had changed, a shift in the very fabric of the labyrinth itself. The creator's presence was stronger now, a malevolent force that permeated every surface and every shadow. And Elaine knew, with a bone-deep certainty, that the final confrontation was at hand. She looked down at the glass shard in her hand, its edges gleaming in the sickly green light. And then, with a final, determined nod, she turned to face the darkness that loomed before her. It was time to end this, once and for all. Time to confront the Creator and put an end to the nightmare that had consumed her for so long. Elaine stepped forward, into the waiting jaws of the labyrinth. And as she did, she felt a flicker of something she hadn't felt in a long, long time. Hope. Thank you for joining us on another spine-chilling journey, where nightmares come to life and horror knows no bounds. If you enjoyed this tale of terror, don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're bo and if you're brave enough, step through the door and subscribe to Sinister Serials, where every day brings a new flavor of fear, from macabre Mondays to thriller Thursdays. And don't forget to check out our other terrifying tales waiting to be discovered in our library of horror. Until next time, keep the lights on, if you dare.